Hi all, I thought I would do um, a video on refilling my um, DIY CO2 kit. Um, I'm currently using it in my tank, it's a bit of a temporary setup until I um, change tanks. Um, and the system is depleted at the moment, so I just thought it'd be handy to show you what it's like when it's depleted, what you can expect. So here's the kit and here's the bottles. So this is the one that has the CO2 in and that's completely empty. This is the one that has the um, bicarbonate of soda in and all the uh, citric acid has transferred from this one to this one. Um, you can see hopefully the gauge on the, um, the bottle is just about at zero so it needs a replenishing. There's my bubbler. The one that you get with this kit is a little bit hit and miss. This one is all metal and it is a lot 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 better quality and you can it's like a micro adjuster and you can you can really finely adjust the rate at which it bubbles. At the minute I've turned it right up because the pressure's virtually gone. Just to give you a bit of an idea of how this works okay and why this works. So basically you, you end up with the two solutions in the two bottles okay so citric acid in here um, and bicarbonate of soda in here which will be an alkaline. So there's a tube in this bottle which goes right to the bottom. The tube in this bottle um, does go to the bottom um, but also can you see there's like a T piece in there like a Y piece <clears throat> and that basically stops any transfer of liquid from this bottle to this bottle. The pressure gauge reads the pressure in the whole system before the bubbler. So what happens is you, you get it going by squeezing the citric acid and this transfers some fluid over into here. This reacts with the bicarbonate of soda and create, starts to create your gas. Now you will see then the citric acid being forced back down this tube into here and this one will end up bubbling in here. But where the gas is coming out here and that, that Y piece ensures that, that both bottles are at the same pressure. So when, when the gas is being dispersed and disappears, okay, there is gas in here and so the they, the bottles need to equalize so in doing so the gas in here transfers over to here but because this pipe is in the solution this gas pushes the citric acid up here and into here this causes more reaction more gas and basically stops the flow so it's kind of self-regulating in that way um, I hope I hope I made that clear and it's understandable uh, that's why there's the Y piece on there to stop this solution going back into here. There's my isolation valve. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to turn the isolation valve off and disconnect this. Uh, just to show you in the aquarium what's happening. So there is my diffuser and you can see there the bubbles of CO2. So just to show you what a difference it's made on the plants, so these are some plants here and as you get, to, so further down here is before I was using CO2 uh, and especially over here. So you can see the plants are a lot darker, okay if the camera would focus. Okay, let's give it a go. Can you see near the top how the, pl the plant stem is a lot lighter and the leaves are a lot lighter? And that is since, oh, I can't get this to focus, sorry. And that is since I was using CO2. So the plants look really lush and then further down 
that's where I stopped there. That's where I wasn't using CO2. Okay, so I've got my um, citric acid and baking soda mixed out, and these are my bottles ready to be recharged. So the one with citric acid in is completely empty, and that's all being transferred to the one that had baking soda in. So when you mix this up, you'll see a lot of the um, product at the bottom, okay? But don't worry, it will all mix up. And what you'll end up with is a completely clear bottle like that, a very fizzy solution. Um, I won't want to try it, but it's probably just a very fizzy kind of pot that just tastes of, I don't know, maybe just fizzy water because essentially it will have neutralized Although it is, it is fizzy. So I'm going to remove my Chinese kit. I've labelled up my bottles B and C. One is baking soda and one is citric acid. Okay. So we're going to empty this out. empty. Okay, so I've got a funnel, baking soda, 200 grams. And while the funnel is dry, put the citric acid in, just give it a tap to get the rest of the powder out and then 200 grams of citric acid granules okay so in the citric acid we want uh, 600 ml of water that's 200 And in the bicarbonate of soda, we want 200 ml only. And that's because the citric acid is going to transfer to that. So give them a bit of a mix up. As you will see, probably all the citric acid granules won't mix up. You probably end up with some at the bottom, although this one's mixed up quite well because the water was a bit warmer. Um, bicarbonate of soda, very milky. So then take your kit, drop it back in the bottles, making sure you get it the right way round. Tighten it up. These bottles, by the way, was um, it was diet lemonade from Aldi, seventeen pence each. So really cheap bottles. Close off the isolation valve. Just give them a bit of a swiss and squeeze the um, squeeze the citric acid. Okay, I'll hold that one there so you can see it. Instantly, you can see that it's fizzing like mad. That one's bubbling a bit because what's happening is that there's pressure being created in here, so it's transferring across here, but only the gas which is going in the Y piece. So the gas is going in there, and if I open the valve, you can you can hear the gas. Now you see what's happening here, if we just tilt the camera a little bit more. So 
I said to you that it was um, self-regulating. Okay, so we're getting, we're just starting to get a little bit of pressure in there. I said that this thing was self-regulating. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let some pressure out and what you'll see is citric acid being transferred down this tube. And the reason for that is because when the pressure reduces in this bottle, it has to obviously equalize from this bottle. And by doing that, it transfers citric acid up the tube down here and then creates more of, of a reaction to replenish that gas. It's quite an ingenious setup whoever ever invented this. So let's let, let a bit of gas out and you will see more citric acid come into here. There we go. This, this bubbles when I shut the valve off because the pressure in here is increasing and then it, it basically transfers that pressure over to here. Okay, so there we go. So I'm going to transfer this back onto the aquarium. You can see the pressure now is getting up into the green zone and it will self-regulate itself more or less in and stay in the green zone and it will last this will last for about a week maybe it won't last as long as a week now because i've just left quite a bit of gas off there but um we'll go and stick it back on the aquarium okay so this is just in a temporary position at the moment so um i've reconnected the pipe up to the to the um isolation valve let's go back up to my bubbler so I've reconnected the, the pipe up, my bubbler's there, and then that pipe goes up to the, um, the diffuser in the tank, which I'll show you. With this kit, you do get a magnet, and basically that's so that you can take that out of the citric acid. So if you get a little bit of overpressure, you can take that out, and it won't transfer any more citric acid into the solution. And so you can use up some of the pressure that's in because I have had this go getting on for four kilograms per cubic meter so you can just take that using that magnet that's the idea of the magnet that you get with the kit okay so what I'm going to do now is turn on the isolation valve and adjust my dropper And I'm going to have it going fairly fast because we're about halfway through the day and I had run out of CO2. So if I can show you that. There you go. So as you alter that, you increase or decrease the rate. The normal rate that you would possibly have is they reckon about one bubble per second but I'm just going to go a little bit faster for a couple of hours so inside the tank there is my diffuser and what I've done I've moved it to underneath my power head for the outlet for the filter and so what it's doing, it's distributing those bubbles a little bit more when they get to the surface. Which you, which you probably can't see. But just while we're looking on here, if you look at those plants, you see how lush the stems are. And if you look further down, that was before I had CO2. Similarly, that is all new growth on that plant. The darker area of the plant is before I had CO2. And again here, if I can focus on that, see the darker area to this plant as you go up. So the lighter area is fresh new growth since I've been using CO2. So there you go, that, 
so that um, is primed now, ready to go again for another week. Um, so I hope I hope this video has been useful to you, and not just to show you like a lot of videos setting up from scratch, but to show you replenishing and what happens. So you see on the left, that's the bicarbonate of soda. It's very milky, and on the right is the citric acid that that has all uh, dissolved this time, but that's clear. As that is transferred to the left, that will end up being clear. And I think it just creates a fizzy, neutral solution. But um, certainly, I can definitely confirm that the CO2 is having a, a positive effect on my plant growth. You can see that those shoots there that have, there's probably about four inches now that's grown in I would say three weeks that is, is really good lush looking plant life. Anybody that might be saying oh, how much CO2 do you know you're putting in? So here is my CO2 um, tester and basically it's a glass vial that goes in the tank and you put some 40k H water in it, only a few drops and then some uh, testing solution and there's literally one drop in there and basically that colour, at the minute it's sort of a bluey green um, but it goes from blue through green to yellow and it shows you, it gives you an indication of how much CO2 is in the water in the tank so I know that, that the levels are still relatively medium to low in my, in my tank and so that, that is a way of testing how much CO2 you're actually putting in, which you do need to know really. But other than that, your fish would, would be gasping on the top of the water if you're putting too much in. Alright, any questions? I'll try and answer them, but thanks for watching. Hope you found it interesting.